Experiencing almost three decades of struggle, poverty, homelessness, and the greatest loss of my life, my mother, I was in a desperate search for stability. At the age of 28, this kid from West Philly made the life-altering decision to join the U.S. Navy. That became my plan to make it out and to make my mother proud. There were no plans B or C. I had to make this work. 20 years of service meant retirement before the age of 50 and countless other benefits. So I made the trip from Philly to Fort Dix, New Jersey to complete my enlistment process. When you raise your right hand and take the oath of enlistment, you not only swear to support and defend the United States, but to also obey the orders of the president and all officers appointed over you. Failing to obey those orders can lead to some serious consequences. I had taken the oath a handful of times over my 10 years of service. My superiors and peers all viewed me as squared away. Being a model sailor came with the pressure to be perfect. Perfection does not exist. But I did everything in my power to get as close to it as possible. My resume in the Navy was long and full of all kinds of awards and recognitions. What it lacked was any form of discipline for disobeying the rules and regulations provided by the Uniform Code of Military Justice. There was an ongoing joke that to advance to the rank of chief or receive your anchors, you had to have been to multiple captain's masts. Sailors are sent to masts when they are accused of breaking the rules. Many of my superiors have been in a fair amount of trouble over their careers, but that was not the path for me. I chose to tread the fine line between doing what's right and risking my career. In 2019, after spending almost six years between two seagoing commands, I received orders to Great Lakes, Illinois to be an instructor at Recruit Training Command. RTC is the Navy's only boot camp. It is said to be an honor to be stationed there, and I saw it as that. My first year, I hit the ground running. In no time I was I earned the position to be the leading petty officer over 40 sailors. My newfound title and responsibilities left minimal margin for error. I had to lead by example. Everything was going well until early 2020 when the COVID pandemic took the world by storm. With the pandemic came another set of rules and restrictions we had to follow. All branches of the armed forces ceased recruit arrivals and training across the country except for, drum roll please, the world's finest Navy. The plan was to lock us on base and continue to train and ship out recruits. With a few days notice, we were told to pack our bags and leave our families and our homes for the next few months. No sailor would ever expect to be ripped from their home while at a shore command. That is exactly what happened to us stationed at RTC. The Navy's main concern was hitting the annual quota of recruits, which is roughly 40,000. While the country was shut down, we managed to train the largest class of recruits in over 20 years. That was the story released to the media. No one knew about all the suicides, deaths, and illnesses that plagued the command. My own mental and physical health took a huge hit. I became a functioning alcoholic, gained 40 pounds, started therapy, and was prescribed a plethora of different medications. Mental health is a touchy subject in the military. It is seldom you are encouraged to seek treatment. Instead, you are pushed to have warrior toughness. As a kid from West Philly, I was as tough as they come, but I had reached my breaking point. The fine line I once tread of doing what's right started to unravel. By 2021, the world began to slowly reopen. We were eventually allowed to return home and transit to and from base as normal. No, what we were not allowed to do was travel out of the area. No planes, trains, or automobiles outside of a hundred mile radius. Having such little freedom after what we had experienced was difficult. It was time for a break, time to find a way to have some fun, even if it meant breaking the rules. A small group of friends came up with the idea of going to New Orleans, Louisiana. I was more hesitant knowing the immense amount of trouble that we can get into, especially me, the one who did everything by the book. 
After thinking about it and receiving several peer pressure and texts from friends, I said, screw that book, I'm in. The plan was to fly out Friday evening after work and return Sunday evening. As the plane departed Chicago O'Hare International, I felt this rush. There was no turning back. We got to New Orleans knowing we had roughly 30 hours to live our best lives. Friday night was spent on Bourbon Street. Saturday was spent on a booze cruise on the bayou during the day and back on Bourbon Street to end the night. There's never a dull moment on Bourbon Street. From the sights and sounds of bucket drummers to local artists vibing to the tourists sprawled out drunk or flashing skin for beads in the street, Bourbon Street does not miss a beat. After being locked behind gates for months to experiencing the eclectic melting pot that is Nolens, it was such a breath of not so fresh air, but fresh air. <laughs> My friends and I decided to go to a club to cap off the weekend. The club had two levels with a set of stairs to transit between floors. The first floor had tables and chairs where we commenced the people watching. We could see the stairs were steep and slippery from spilled drinks and condensation from the heat. Over the course of 15 minutes, we watched at least 15 people take a spill. It was an odd source of entertainment, but comical nonetheless. We made our way upstairs to drink more and dance until closing, which was 3 a.m. As closing time approached, I led the pack down the stairs, telling everyone to be careful. Then two steps from the bottom, I slipped and fell. The front of my feet slid into the wall, and my right ankle made the sound like the three little mascots on Rice Krispies. Snap, crackle, and pop. <laughs> I spent many years playing basketball. I was taught to tighten my sneaker in the event of a rolled ankle. So I tied my Nike Air Maxes as tight as I could, which is a cardinal sin, but that's another story, <laughs> and began walking back to our hotel. My friends got a good laugh, as did I, but I knew something was wrong. The pain and discomfort were much more intense than any sprained ankle I had ever suffered from. After showering, I applied some ice for an hour or so and went to bed. When I woke up the following morning, my foot, ankle, and lower leg all doubled in size. They were so swollen, it looked like my skin was about to rip open. It was hard to avoid freaking out anymore, but I needed to get an idea of what was wrong. I searched the symptoms on Google, and the results read I had likely suffered a broken ankle. My heart sank because there was no way I could get medical treatment in New Orleans having a flight to catch back to Chicago. My only option was to tough it out until we got back. Imagine having to walk around on a potentially broken ankle for hours. My usual long stride became a short, agonizing shuffle. Our first flight was into Charlotte for a 90-minute layover. Once we landed and departed the plane, we entered an airport full of turmoil. Bad rainstorms had moved in, causing flights to be delayed and canceled. Panic set in as our flight got, kept getting pushed back. I thought we had no chance of making it back in time for work in the morning. Not being present for military muster, which is the military attendance, will result in an unauthorized absence. Being marked UA can lead to a domino effect of consequences, like captain's mass, loss of rank, loss of pay, and loss of all trust from your superiors. Taking this risk could have had a detrimental impact on my pristine career. After, after eight hours, we were finally able to board a plane back to Chicago. We got back around 2 a.m., retrieved our vehicles, and made the drive back to the Great Lakes area. Being in no condition to drive, a friend of mine drove me and my car to the Naval Hospital. I made sure to have my story ready because I knew there were going to be questions as soon as I walked in the ER. After checking in, a young male nurse took me to a room. It's almost 5 a.m. What could have happened? He asked. I was walking my dog. He tugged a little too hard, and my foot slipped off the curb. It took a lot of restraint to say that with a straight face. I could tell he didn't believe me, but he went with it. He took me to get x-rays where I learned I had broken my ankle in three places. The male nurse put me in a soft cast, handed me a set of crutches, and sent me on my way with just an hour to spare before work. My friend had to leave, 
So I was left to drive home attempting to use only my left foot. It was the scariest drive of my life. Shortly after returning home, I sent the photos to my superiors and I told them I had broken my ankle while taking my dog on his morning walk. I couldn't be honest because I had no business flying to New Orleans, living La Vida Loca, and returning home with an injury. That was my story. I had to stick to it. They were all shocked and felt bad for me as I rolled around on my blue knee walker scooter with a big black boot on my foot. <laughs> Internally, I thought I would feel bad for lying and breaking the rules, but I honestly felt liberated. The only one I felt bad for was my French bulldog, Rocky. He's the sweetest little guy and would never put me in harm's way. <laughs> Aside from the lie I told, <laughs> I had the time of my life. I rolled around on my scooter for months with a smile on my face, just thinking, wow, I actually got away with it. <laughs> the risk was totally worth it. My reward was a broken ankle and a great story.